Anyway, so here we are with the Unitarian concept of God. You know, you know, the dead man, Ephesians 2, 1, he can't understand the Trinity, the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. An unregenerated mind and heart is impossible to comprehend it, right? Amen. And so what we, what all that man can come up with, dead man, the sinner, is a Unitarian perspective of God. And so we get lots, in a way, Unitarian perspectives on God, don't we? That's right. Whether it's Oprah or whether it's the Muslims, whatever that is, so... At one level, it's important to know that the dead man can only have a Unitarian concept of God, and he has not outwitted us in any way. Amen. What does that do? That, to have a Unitarian concept of God, just a couple of thoughts, it doesn't bring glory to God. It doesn't respond to God's Word. Christ is eliminated. The sacrifice is eliminated. Mm. God is no longer defined as according to Holy Scripture, mm. and nor is He holy. Therefore, mercy and the grace of God are needed. Now man is the judge, and he set himself up as God. That's right. There is no wrath. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Man yeah. has eliminated the judgment of God and therefore the wrath of God. And therefore, man, I assume he thinks in his dead state, thinks he's okay. Yeah. And isn't it amazing in the things that we encounter how man will do anything to avoid this judgment? They will analyze and rationalize. And what is so profoundly crazy to me is that these men with unitarian perspectives on God even take some of their understanding of God from the Bible. Yeah. Is that not crazy? You don't find that to be so totally insane. Yeah. They even end up creating Unitarian churches. Yes. And why do you have a church if you don't believe in the God of the Bible? Because the God of the Bible is the one that created All the right. church, That's right? right. Say that? So you've got a couple evidences of sort of the insane, inside-out way these people think about this. Yes. Yes. The other thing is that what God, what man in his state, before I get to read a couple of facts here, he really inverts the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The dead man says, there are many ways to my Unitarian God. That's See what right. happens? So while there are three parts of the Godhead, dead man says there's many ways to God. So if you begin to see how they communicate and think, you're, uh, if you want to converse with them, you can begin to point out the, just the, how they actually are responding, but obviously backwards to the commands of God. I find that fascinating. Yeah. I'll read a couple of things about Unitarianism. I know you guys know about it, but just some enlightening stuff. Come on. That's okay. Bring it on. All right. Unitarian. Now, Unitarian started out, it wasn't a, um, it's now Unitarian Universalist, but Unitarian on its own. It was a little bit different. Unitarians call themselves by that name because they claim to see a basic unity underlying all diversities. Their pamphlets state that the hope, that they hope to, quote, forge reasonable beliefs for ourselves without turning religion into no more and an intellectual exercise to respect all persons while feeling free to disagree openly with all points of view expressed. Hmm. The United States, the first church to adopt Unitarian doctrine, officially was King's Chapel in Boston, Massachusetts. There you go. 1786, the congregation left its Episcopal roots yep. to embrace the Unitarian view. Soon after, Harvard University followed suit. Yes. The American Unitarian Association was formally established in 1825 and was led by William Ellery Channing. Pastor of Federal Street Congregational Church in Boston. Mm -hmm. Channing is the most Unitarian ministers of the time, despite their rejection of Trinitarianism, relied on the Bible for their theological formulations. Unitarians claim a number of prominent 18th and 19th century Americans that embraced Unitarianism or deist beliefs. They include five mm -hmm. presidents of the United States, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, John Quincy Adams, <coughs> William Howard Taft. Other famous Americans include <coughs> Ralph Waldo Emerson and Susan Anthony. I remember one thing that struck me when I was on this, my, on this journey of church before this one I was in, the pastor was telling a story about a pastor friend of his who had been preaching for at least 10 or 20 years, a long time. And one day the pastor uh, went home after his sermon, sat down, I don't know if he was reading the paper or the Bible, but realized he wasn't saved and got saved in that moment, born again in the moment. Mm. And it struck me, because I was raised in the church, how impossible that would be. How can a guy stand in a pulpit and not be saved? Obviously, William Adelaide Channing was in that same place. And to me, it's just insane, again, that they would, if you renounce the core doctrines of the Bible, how can you still use it? Why would you still use it to formulate your theological formations? Because you're a devil. 
You're a devil. That's a good point. I think men, you know, men are so insane. We, sin, obviously, is a corruption of the soul. But it clearly affects our mind. Yeah. Have you ever, you know how you listen to get people walk up and they say the most insane things, they draw the most insane, unrealistic uh, conclusions to the Bible, despite the fact they've never read it, which is the beginning point of insanity, and they draw a conclusion for it. And I think the depth of the depravity of sin, the longer I go down this road, is staggeringly evident in the way that men think. And this is not yeah. wisdom. This is man needs to be in an insane asylum mm -hmm. for making that sort of connection. Now imagine what else he thinks about. If, you know, it wasn't for the grace of God to constrain all of this insanity. What kind of chaotic world we live in? Unitarians claim that a number, let's see, we read those. In the 20th century, Unitarians abandoned any claim to biblical authority. Some prominent Americans in the 20th century who claimed to be Unitarian Universalists were Adlai Stevenson, who ran for president twice, Robert Fulgham, Paul Newman, poet Carl Sandburg, writer producer Rod Sterling. In 1961, Unitarian churches merged with a small movement called the Universalist Church. These people are dead and they don't believe what we don't what we believe in. We're diametrically opposed. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And so we're just, we are like two armies setting across from each other, mm -hmm. talking about this. And the point of uh, unity is uh, very small at all. I think it's just, it's a, to me, it's an incredible understanding to have about those people you talk to. And obviously my guess is, back to the, this doesn't fit our ministry thing, is that we're talking to people in the church who are almost like these guys. They've created views of their own. They've mixed in Christianity. We don't know all this. I'm not ever tell you guys anything new. But that's, to me, such a profound thing that I see day after day, day after day. What you guys really don't believe, you don't believe in the Scriptures. And that means you don't believe in the God of the Bible. Amen. And you're mixing all this together, and it's not as if I don't believe it's if, well... If you mix some of this in part, you're still okay. I don't believe that at all. In fact, the most haunting verse for me in my personal life is Matthew 7, 21, 22, I think. Jesus says, many will come to me that day and done great things in my name. And I'll say, depart from me, you work for iniquity, for I never knew you. That scares me to death. That scares me into getting up and doing, seeking God with my whole heart. And I'm not Amen. trying to be a pious religious man here and all that kind of stuff. But see, they're, they're, not, they're not over there. No. What do you say to that? No, they're burning you could kick candles. them in the butt. You could, you could get in their face and it just doesn't. It's so profoundly crazy to me. And what I think is going on is they are so, our, I don't want to say our nation because it gives glory to the nation in a sense, but we're just, their arts are so hard. If you want to, I think to challenge the Unitarian concept of God is to realize that that man's heart is so incredibly, infinitely hard and he's so caught up in sin. <clears throat> that is the great understanding there. And you're not looking at a guy. You're just looking at a piece of flesh who's up here spouting something to you. I mean, I really think that's what goes on. I mean, we care for these people. And we want them to get saved and go out and preach. But I think I'm, I just think God has changed my perspective on, on the nature of these people. My nature, before I got saved, on the nature of mankind. I don't know if that's important to y'all or that's something that you, you guys know very well. But I think ever increasing, that's the great revelation. And it breaks my heart.